Hi friends, welcome back to our YouTube channel. Today we have to discuss about auxiliary memory in computer organization course, computer architecture course, computer organization and architecture course. First point, another name for auxiliary memory is secondary memory. Hence, we can say that auxiliary memory can also be called as secondary memory. Next, second point, to store the large data files permanently, we have to use auxiliary memory. That means, we have to store large data files permanently. For that purpose, we have to use auxiliary memory. Third point, auxiliary memory is non-volatile. That means, once the power is switched off, whatever the data that is stored in the auxiliary memory cannot be erased. Hence, we can say that auxiliary memory can also be called as non-volatile memory. Next, auxiliary memory can store terabytes of data. So, terabytes of data means 10 power 12. Tera means 10 power 12. To store terabytes of data, we have to use a memory called as auxiliary memory. Next one, auxiliary memory is cheaper when compared to the primary memory. So, in terms of cost, the cost of auxiliary memory is less when compared to the primary memory such as RAM and ROM. Next one, based on the access, auxiliary memory devices can be classified into two types. So, first one is sequential access device. Second one is random access device. In the case of sequential access device, we have to access the data sequentially. Suppose uh, we are taking five songs in a, uh, five songs are there. So, suppose we want to access third song. First, we have to access the first song. Next, we have to access the second song. Then, we have to access the third song. Okay. So, that means we have to access the data sequentially in the case of sequential access device. Second type is random access device. We have to access the data, whatever the data we require that data can be accessed randomly. Suppose there are five songs are there. We want to access third song. So directly we have to access that third song. In the previous case, first we have to access the first song. Then we have to access the second song. After that, we have to access the third song. But in the case of random access device, Whatever the data we require, that data can be accessed directly. But here, whatever the data uh, we require, that data can be accessed sequentially. That is the difference between sequential access device and a random access device. The example for sequential access device is magnetic tape. So, magnetic tape is the example for sequential access device. The data can be accessed from the magnetic tape sequentially, not in randomly. Next one. The example for random access device is magnetic disk and optical disk. These are the two examples for random access device. Next, now we can go for magnetic tape. In the next video, we can go for magnetic disk. In the magnetic tape, the first point is, it is a sequential access type. 
storage device okay so in the case of magnetic tape we are accessing the data sequentially not in randomly and also we have to store the data into the magnetic tape in a sequential manner okay suppose this is the example for magnetic tape suppose in this uh, tape there are five songs are stored suppose we want to access fourth song we do not access the fourth song directly to access the fourth song first we have to access the first song next we have to access the second song next we have to access the third song after that whatever the song we require that is the fourth song that can be accessed okay that is the sequential access storage device so magnetic tape is a sequential access storage type device next one it is very popular storage medium for large data files so for storing the large data files permanently we have to use magnetic tape this is the diagrammatic representation of magnetic tape in that one there are two reels are there first one is supply reel and the second one is take up reel supply reel can provide the plastic ribbon and the take up reel can receive the plastic ribbon that are from the supply reel next one uh, this is called as plastic ribbon so this line is nothing but plastic ribbon only one side of the plastic ribbon can be coated with magnetic material on that magnetic material some magnetic spots are there in that magnetic spots we have to store the information in the form of bits only one side of the plastic ribbon can be coated with magnetic material on that side we have to place this read or write head so read or write head is used for reading the information from this plastic ribbon or are writing the information into the plastic ribbon the plastic ribbon can be moved from supply reel to the take up reel by using drive rollers drive rollers are used for moving the plastic ribbon from supply reel to the take up reel at that time the read write head can read the information from the plastic ribbon or are writing the information into the plastic ribbon next point the data stored on the magnetic tape can be read again and again okay so you want to read the information that is stored on the magnetic tape can be read again and again how many number of times you require next point whenever a new data is stored into the magnetic tape whatever the previous data that is stored on the magnetic tape that can be erased whenever new data is stored into the magnetic tape the previous data that is stored in the magnetic tape can be erased next point uh, the cost required to store the information into the magnetic tape is inexpensive that means the cost required to store the information into the magnetic tape is less expensive next point the width of the plastic ribbon okay width of the plastic ribbon can be various from uh, 4 mm to 
one inch and the how much of information that can be stored into the magnetic tape can be various from 100 MB to 200 GB. Okay, that means 100 MB to 200 GB of data that can be stored into the magnetic tape. So the plastic ribbon width can be varies from 4 mm to 1 inch. Next one, uh, the main purpose of magnetic tape is used to provide backup storage. For backup storage, we have to use the magnetic tape. Next one, uh, the information that is stored in the magnetic tape in the form of bits, the collection of bits can be formed as one character. Okay, how many number of bits that are required to form one character? So, usually seven or nine bits are recorded simultaneously to form a character together with a parity bit. Okay. How many number of bits are required? 7 or 9 bits are required to form one character together with a parity bit. Here the parity bit is used for uh, error detection purpose. Okay. Next one. Uh, on the magnetic tape, we have to perform four operations. First one is magnetic tape can be stopped. That means we have to stop the uh, moving of magnetic tape. Second one is magnetic tape can be started to move either in forward direction or in reverse direction. That means magnetic tape can be moved either in forward direction or in reverse direction. Third one, magnetic tape can be rewound. That means the magnetic tape can be moved to the starting position. So these four types of operations that can be performed on the magnetic tape. Magnetic tape can be stopped. Magnetic tape can be rewound. Magnetic tape can be uh, started either in forward direction or in reverse direction. But magnetic tape cannot be stopped or are started in between the individual characters okay we cannot stop uh, we cannot stop the magnetic tape between the individual characters it is not possible to stop or are start the magnetic tape between the individual characters okay hence the, uh, the information that is stored on the magnetic tape in terms of blocks. A block is nothing but a collection of records. But where we have to stop the magnetic tape? To stop the magnetic tape, we have to use some gaps. That gaps are inserted between the records. In that gap, we have to stop the magnetic tape. Okay, so here see this one R1, R2, R3 are the records. Okay, in that records, we have to store the information. And uh, this is, uh, these, these are called as gaps. Okay, so Two individual records are separated by using gaps. That gaps are called as inter-record gaps. Okay. R1 and R2 are separated by using some gap. R2 and R3 is separated by using some gap. In that gap, we have to stop the magnetic tape. What is the purpose of this inter-record gap? So, inter-record gap is used for stopping the magnetic tape. Okay. In that time, only we have to stop the moving of the magnetic tape. Okay. Next point. 
each record on the magnetic tape has an identification bit pattern at the beginning and the end of the record. Suppose this is R1 record, before R1 record, after R1 record, some identification bit pattern is available in the form of gap. Next, this is R2 record. This is an identification bit pattern before the record R2 and after the record R2. Next, this is R3 record, an identification bit pattern before R3 record and after the R3 record. So, each record on the magnetic tape has an identification bit pattern at the beginning of the record and the ending of the record. Suppose, by reading the bit pattern at the beginning of the record, the tape control identifies the record number. By reading the bit pattern at the end of the record, the tape control identifies the beginning of a gap. Okay, so by reading the bit pattern at the beginning of a record, the tape control identifies the record number. Okay, this is R1 record. So, this is the first record by, by reading the bit pattern before the record. By reading the bit pattern at the end of the record, the tape control identifies as a gap, identifies it as a gap before the next record. Okay, so by observing this, we can say that the magnetic tape can store the data in the form of records. Okay. These records are separated by using some gaps. That gaps are called as inter-record gap. To represent that gap, we have to use some identification bit pattern. Okay. Suppose by reading the bit pattern before the beginning of a record, the tape control identi identifies the record number. Okay. Next, by reading the bit pattern at the end of a record, the tape control identifies it as a gap before the next record. Okay. Next one. A magnetic tape unit can be addressed by using the record number and the number of characters within the record. Okay. So, by using that two factors, a magnetic tape can be addressed. Okay. A magnetic tape can be addressed by using two points. First one is record number. Second one is number of characters within the record. These records are of a fixed length or a variable length. Okay. Some magnetic tapes can follow a fixed length records. Some magnetic tape can follow a variable length record. Okay. So, hence we can say that the records in the magnetic tape can be of a fixed length or a variable length. So, next one. What are the advantages of magnetic tape and what are the disadvantages of magnetic tape? First, we can go for the advantages. First one is inexpensive. The cost of the magnetic tape is inexpensive and the cost of storing the data in the magnetic tape is also inexpensive. Next, second point, long-term storage. We have to store the data permanently in the magnetic tape. So, it provides backup storage. Next, third point, reusable. So, uh, the magnetic tape can be reused. 
many times. Next one, portable. So the, the magnetic tape can be moved from one place to another place. Next one, it is compact and easy to store in racks. So magnetic tape is uh, compact and easily stored in a racks. Next, what are the disadvantages of magnetic tape? First one is sequential access. Magnetic tape is a sequential access uh, device. We have to access the data in the magnetic tape in a sequential manner, not in a random. Next, second point, it requires caring to store. That is nothing but magnetic tape can be put in a place that is free from dust, that is free from humidity. Next one, rate of data transfer is low. We are transferring the data uh, within one unit of time, that is uh, the transfer of data within one second from the magnetic tape is low. Next one, stored data cannot be easily updated or are modified. Once the data is stored in a magnetic tape, it cannot be easily modified, it cannot be easily updated. Okay, so these are the advantages of magnetic tape. These are the disadvantages of magnetic tape. The detailed description of magnetic disc is available in the previous video. Please refer that previous video for magnetic disc in the auxiliary memory. I hope all of you understanding this video. If you really understanding this video, please click on the like button and share this video to your friends and classmates. If you have any doubts, please put your doubts in the comment section. I will try to clarify your doubts. If you really like this video, please subscribe my YouTube channel. So, Divvela Srinivasara. After subscribing my YouTube channel, click on the bell icon to get the future updates in my YouTube channel. For better understanding of computer organization and architecture course, go to this channel and go to the playlist called Computer Architecture for a Computer Organization. It contains more than 80 videos. Thank you. Thank you one and all for watching this video.